Hello everyone, Jace Marino here, and I'm getting a lot of questions from you out there on demoing particularly third-party applications in Teams. And I'm hoping here that I can simplify the concept for everyone um, because it's probably a lot easier than you might think. Most apps show up in four or five different ways across the Teams experience, which in itself is very valuable because apps will tend to follow you across the Teams experience. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you some examples of how I use them here in a second. So arguably the most important thing that I want everybody to take away from this is that the Teams platform is extensible. And the way that applications can show up or render inside of Teams is influenced by what we call these extensibility features or these interface features that you're seeing right now. So one app can show up with all of these different interface components and functionality if the developers have built that experience into Teams or one app can only show up as a tab, or maybe as a tab in a bot, or maybe as a tab in a bot, as well as connecting into the notification feed. It's really up to the developers who are building the applications. But what this means is that the application can quite literally become more and have more value and more functionality inside the team's canvas so these apps can follow you across the way that you naturally work. So this is no longer about not having to leave Teams to interact with an application. You can now not have to leave that part of Teams that you're in with, and able to interact with that application, which is pretty incredible. And I'm not gonna touch on it much on this, on this um, session, but we also then can, can take the value of all the backend services that we have, like Azure, leveraging machine learning, cognitive services, artificial intelligence. You have Microsoft Graph to tap into identity. You have SharePoint to leverage existing investments. Um, you know, Power Apps and Flow, and yes, I understand Power Apps is not really a backend, but I just wanted to fit it on the slide. Um, and so I'll show you a few of these. In addition, I will show you connectors and webhooks here. But again, the point is, what I really want you to take is that these components are the way that apps render inside of Teams. So demoing applications in Teams becomes quite easy when you recognize that frankly, they can only show up in a variety of ways. And that's consistent because we only have certain extensible features right now and, and that they're incredibly valuable features. So having few um, that you see on the screen here, th this is still incredible capability, but you can demo apps really easily recognizing that they all render and show up in the same way. And this is how you connect them all together. So again, multiple applications render in a variety of ways in teams. And I'm not going to spend time on this because I think this will be more valuable for you to see here. And so what I'm gonna do is show you each one of these components really quickly one by one with a real example. But demoing apps again is easy because the available extensibility features are the same for all apps. So again, when I say extensibility features, I'm talking particularly about these interface components right here. This stuff that you see and the way that, that apps will render inside of Teams. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna start first with tabs. Let me pull over my Teams. And right here, this is a channel that I work in with my global technical sales team that I'm a part of. And what I have done is inside of this channel, I've gone up, I've clicked the plus sign to add a tab. I have chosen to add a planner tab. So I clicked on planner. And then what I did is I connected it to an existing planner board. And what you were looking at right here is where we manage content for some of the communities that we work on. So those are tabs and it's beautiful to have those tabs in a consistent manner where the relevant planner and, and application tabs are sitting alongside conversations in the channels that make sense. Okay, so it's great having conversations side by side and when people need to go back and find this content and information or add something to the board, they know where to go because you have a consistent approach. My platform community uh, planner tab sits in my platform channel. Really easy to follow and remember. Okay, next one, personal applications. Now this is where you can see all content for an application aggregated across all teams and channels in one single view, as you see right there. So on that same note, I just showed you an example with Planner and this doesn't need to just be Planner. I wanna clarify any application can show up and render in the way that I mentioned earlier. What I'm trying to show you are these different interface components because what you'll recognize is whether you're demoing Planner or whether you're demoing Salesforce or whether you're demoing Atlassian's Trello, these will all show up in a very similar fashion. So you don't need to learn how to demo a certain third-party application. You just need to understand these extensible features and how they work. And it should be pretty easy because most of you should be using a variety of these every single day. So right here, I'm in the personal application and inside of Planner, I can see an entire view of all these tasks that I have assigned to me, right? And I'm not gonna go through all of this. I'm sure all of you know Planner pretty well. But again, this is the personal tab. 
Um, we have another bot service right here called Appy. And inside of this app, the personal, the personal app has actually got a bunch of functionality. I've got a bot service right here. This is actually the backend SharePoint site in this tab. So I'm on the personal app here again, but this is the backend service that there's actually, this bot is connecting to to give me answers. And you can see there's a bunch of different tabs that you can add into the personal experience. So it's almost like a dashboard for the application. So if you go back to tabs in Teams channels, this is the place where you wanna to work together with your team on a certain application. But if you go back to the personal tab here, this is where you individually can see the entire experience for that application. Messaging applications is one of my favorite components of Teams applications that we don't talk about enough. And I love using these, I use them all the time. I'm gonna show you one of my favorites right now. So I did this recently in our Teams platform channel. Let me go into this here. And let's say I wanted to start a new conversation. And let's say that I want to film a video, uh, shocker for any of you that know me, to, to make an announcement. So right here below the messaging tray, I've got a bunch of different icons for applications that I use regularly, and these are called messaging extensions. And when I click on them, they allow me to invoke those applications without having to leave Teams or the channel or the chat functionality that I'm in right now. And so this one's for YouTube, and I can type in process automation Microsoft Teams, and what's gonna happen is without leaving this part of the Teams experience, this is searching across YouTube to find what I just typed in. And I can click on this and I can share what you're looking at right here. This is a card. When we talk about cards, these are these preset cards that have these beautiful renderings and these previews of whatever it is that you're looking at. And so what I could do is I can click enter and I can send this. So I just searched and found a YouTube video and sharing a beautiful preview card now that users can click on and watch without having to leave the actual message itself in Teams. Now again, you can do this across all applications. I've got YouTube down here, I have Poly, I have Power Automate, here's Azure DevOps. All of these applications, when they pull up Prezi Video, they allow me to search across that application and the services that I'm connected to within the application. So with Prezi, I've got previously recorded videos that I can click on and share from right here within Teams. Messaging extensions are unbelievable. I love these things, leverage them all the time. Okay, so adaptive cards, these are great. And these are usually uh, adding interaction to the connection that you have with your bots, your extensions, and your applications. So this here is an interactive card that we have with Polly, as well as from one of the flows that I created before. And really, these are all cards, and I showed you this earlier with the messaging extension, but these buttons make these cards adaptive and interactive. And so with Polly, when we actually connect with Polly, I can click on this to create a poll, right? With this flow connection that I set up to let me know when somebody submits a new registration request, which is just a form right here in this tab. So I've actually embedded the form as a tab in this channel. And when people go in and they wanna submit a request for a new registration page, they fill out this form, they hit submit, that's the trigger. And Power Automate is just a set of triggers and actions. And the action is that Flow or, or Power Automate posts a notification here with an adaptive card. And it lets me know that a new submission request has been submitted in the form and I can click on that button to view the details. So these are adaptive cards, these are beautiful. You can connect with these in a variety of different ways. The simplest one I think about all the time are approvals. So a lot of organizations have done really simple templates with Flow uh, or Power Automate and Power Apps where you have a really easy form to submit a re approval request and then the user receives something that looks like this poly adaptive card here that says approve or reject. And then it'll notify the user and the service that you're connected to. So a great way to, to, again, interact with an application without having to leave that part of the team's canvas you're in and doing it in a way that you, you have, can have conversations and do this in a group environment. Okay, and then activity feed. Activity feed is a great one that's fairly new for a lot of applications, but we just got the ability to connect in with communities in our activity feed. And so if you go up to the activity feed, applications now have the ability to connect here. Now this becomes really valuable when, as an example, I wanna stay across things that are happening in Yammer. So when Chris Mellon posts something really valuable in one of the few communities that I'm a part of, because I have the Yammer Communities app and because I have notifications on, I will get a notification in my activity feed and eventually I will get a red uh, badge notification, just like you see here with chats, on the application itself. So this is a great integration that really takes this one step further uh, on connecting our applications into the Teams experience and again, allowing them to follow you as you go.
Okay, and then finally connectors. Now connectors again, post notifications and updates from your application or service directly into channels of your choice. So I'm back in this Roadshows channel. I'm gonna go, if you hit the ellipses on any one of these channels, you have the option to set connectors. Now these can be custom built, but we have a lot of templates available to, to leverage immediately. And so let's say that I want to add a connector for Bing News. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit add here. And then now that it's been added, I have the ability to configure. So this is gonna show up automatically. And let's say I give this a name for the demo. Let's say I've got topics. Let's say Microsoft Teams. And as you can see, it picked that up. And then I can choose the time that I like my digest delivered and hit save. And then what would happen, I'm not gonna save this, but what happens is the connector will automatically funnel in Bing News to the general channel. So because I hit this ellipses here earlier, what has happened is the connector for Bing News will post on the regular intervals that I've chosen. And I can do this with a variety of different applications. So again, if you go back to these slides here and you think about all the different ways these applications render, it doesn't matter which application you're demoing. Again, this could be Salesforce, this could be Trello, this could be Planner, this could be any application. We have limitations to how many different capabilities these apps have that are all limited by this extensible interface. And I hate phrasing it that way, but I think it's easier to think about because again, you don't need to realize or, or recognize what type of service you're using or what type of application it is. You just need to think about how you want to demo it to your customer and the story you want to tell. Now, one piece of, you know, one, one disclaimer here is that not every application is going to render in every single way. So as an example, ServiceNow as it is today only shows up as a bot in Teams. Um, a, if you look at another example would be Salesforce. Salesforce only shows up as a connector today. So certain applications haven't leveraged all of the extensible features, but again, you can think about these all in the same way and build your story based off of that. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you can leverage this. Please let me know how we can make this easier for you to share with your customers.